Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to properly use Lightroom's profiles. Let's begin our discussion by talking about what the differences are between Lightroom Profiles and Lightroom Presets, because at first glance they seem to be very similar. For example, the first thing you would do to an unprocessed image is either apply a Lightroom Preset or a Lightroom Profile. So the first thing you do before you do anything else, apply a Preset or a Profile, and they seem to be very similar in that regard. But that is where the similarity ends. For example, I have this unprocessed RAW file. If I go over to the left-hand panel to the Presets tab, I could hover over some presets, and what it will show me is a preview of what the finished image will be. So a preset is meant to be a time saver. It's meant to be one click and you're done. At worst, you'd pick a preset and then go over to the right-hand panel of the, of the Develop module and just touch up the settings or the adjustments a bit. So presets are meant to be a time saver. Profiles, on the other hand, are a starting point. They're meant to get you into a place at the very beginning that you could then build your processing off of and get to a finished product. So profiles aren't time savers. They're just starting points to help you achieve the result you want to achieve. When you import images into Lightroom, Lightroom will automatically add a profile to it. Most often, if you're importing RAW files, it's going to add what's called the Adobe Color Profile. Now, if I go over on the right-hand panel of the Basic tab, at the very top, you'll see the profiles. And you can see that this RAW file has the Adobe Color Profile added to it. What a lot of people don't realize or don't bother with is there are a lot of profiles to choose from. Uh, let me close down this left-hand panel just so we have a bit more room. In this, concentra let's concentrate on the profiles. If I go to this drop-down, you'll see there's a number here. They're all Adobe profiles. There's an Adobe Landscape profile, Neutral profile, Portrait profile, Standard profile, Vivid profile, and a Monochrome profile. Now, unlike the presets, if I just hover over them here, I'm not getting a preview. So I actually have to uh, click on it. And you can see that how this isn't really giving us a finished product. It's just giving us a new starting point. Now, there are a lot more profiles to choose from. You just need to open up what is called the Profile Browser. If I go to this drop-down at the very bottom, you can see Browse. But a faster way is you just click on these four little rectangles. I call them the bricks. Click on the bricks and you'll open up the profile browser. Now, from within the browser, we have favorites. And those were the ones that I just hovered over a second ago. So those are all those Adobe ones. And those are repeated here in Adobe Raw. I think by default, um, Adobe... Um, or Lightroom has these favorited uh, so that they're automatically in your favorites. If you unfavorite them, like I'll do now, so they're not in favorites. You can see the favorites number three. It's dropping every time I undo a favorite. If I unfavorite them and close the browser, I'm pretty sure if I go to this drop down, they won't be there anymore. So if you want something in this drop down, just favorite it and then it will be in this drop down. Now let's get back to the profile browser. We have these different categories. We have the Adobe Raw ones, which we just sampled. And here you could hover over them and you'll get a preview of that profile. Below that you have camera matching. Now this will vary from camera to camera and from raw file to raw file. And these most often will only be there if you're working on a manufacturer raw file, meaning a .nef, a .cr2, whatever, a .manufacturer raw file. Uh, they won't be there most often with DNGs and JPEGs and TIFFs and things like that. Now this 
image, if I remember correctly, was shot with a Nikon D850. So all these are Nikon D850 profiles that are actually available in the camera. So I could have shot with portrait in camera, and this is the profile that would have been applied to the image in camera. So you could see these different profiles. And again, I could just hover over them. So again, I want to stress this because a lot of people get confused or they'll email me and they say that under your camera matching, you have a vivid profile or a monochrome zero profile. And I don't have that monochrome orange that technically is. Um, anyway, that's because it's specific to the camera you're using. So the camera you're using, your raw files will have something different there. Here we have some profiles that were installed by a third-party plugin. I use Neg Negative Lab Pro when I shoot film. I scan my negatives and I have a plugin in Lightroom to help me process those scan negatives. It's called Neg Negative Lab Pro and it installed two profiles here, not applicable to this image at all. Now below that are some more that come with Lightroom. These are all profiles that are in Lightroom. I didn't have any of my third-party profiles in here that I sell, all right? Just showing you the ones that come with it. There's artistic, and again, you could just hover, and again, I wanna stress, this just gets you a starting point, and then you process from this point forward. So you could hover over all these. There's the black and white profiles. A lot of nice black and white profiles come with, um, with Lightroom. So again, you could hover over them and you could favorite any of them. There's that little star in the top right hand corner. You could just pick one you like. Let's, there was one down here I liked. That one. I'll just favorite that one. Now it's favorited so it's up here in favorites and it theoretically should be here and there it is right there. Um, so again we could go through all these different ones. Let's unfavorite that because I didn't want to favorite it. So we have black and white ones. We have what they call modern profiles. I'm not so sure what makes them modern, but you could see those as well. And then we have vintage. And I'm not sure what makes those vintage necessarily. I guess they give you more of maybe a film look. And you could do those. So again, you would pick one to start with. And then you would close the profile browser and just continue with your processing. You'll notice when you apply a profile, none of the sliders move at all. Uh, when you apply a preset, the preset will have the sliders placed in specific positions. You also, with many of the profiles, not all of them, you'll have an amount slider. So you could increase the strength or decrease the strength of the profile. Again, you won't have that amount slider on all of the profiles. It's just on some of them. Um, then, you know, you could, you know, touch it up from that point and then adjust from that point forward. Now, like presets you could buy third-party profiles and install them inside or into um, into Lightroom to do that all you need to do is open up the profile browser and like just like that click on the bricks then go to this plus sign and import profiles and on my desktop I happen to have some of the profiles I sell the landscape profiles I sell now this is important. If you buy third-party profiles, they have to be zipped for Lightroom to install them. Often computers will unzip a file when you download it. So if you purchase these third-party profiles and download them, particularly if you're using a Mac, the Mac will automatically unzip them to your downloads folder. If they're unzipped, Lightroom will not install them. That goes for presets as well. So presets and profiles must be zipped or compressed. If your computer does that, just right click on the folder that contains the profiles and then go down to, um, I think it says to compress or something like that. And then you'll be able to rezip them. And then at that point, click on the zip file, click on import, and they'll be in here. And you can see they're automatically right here. And these are profiles that I sell that hopefully get you to a nice starting point as well. And then you could process off of these. And you could see they're in their own kind of group here. So whenever you buy third-party profiles, um, just make sure they're zipped and presets as well. Make sure they're zipped. And then you'll be able to import that zip file into Lightroom. Lightroom will automatically unzip it and install them. Then save that zip file. It won't delete the zip file. Save it somewhere in case 
you know, you buy a new computer and you do a new install Lightroom or your hard drive crashes or anything like that, you have those profiles still zip somewhere safe and then you could reinstall them in Lightroom. Or if you have multiple versions of Lightroom, you could put them on different computers as well. So that's profiles. And remember, the important thing about Lightroom profiles, it, it gets you a starting point, a new starting point that helps you get the result you hope to get. And um, I'd like to see more photographers take advantage of profiles because, and I fall into this trap as well, too often I just accept the Adobe Color Profile or the Adobe Monochrome Profile if I want a black and white image at the beginning. And I should add that. Let's go back to Adobe Color here and close the Profile Browser. If you just click on black and white to convert this image to black and white, it automatically picks the Adobe Monochrome Profile. So a lot of people just take those, either of those profiles as their default profile and go from there. But I think if you experiment a little bit with some of the other profiles that are in Lightroom, you could probably get a um, edit that is more appealing uh, overall and hopefully more appealing to you. So that's profiles in Lightroom. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>